ferns on the mountain. We came out here looking for wildflowers in mid-January after the rains. No real blossoms to share, but the ferns are out. We're on a north-facing slope. Temperature's about 60 degrees. And we've got three ferns right next to each other that have a, a very different look. Ferns are without flowers. They reproduce with spores, no seeds. But they do have wonderful green leaves for photosynthesis. Polypodium, many feet in Greek. Up here uh, beneath this giant rock, keeps it moist, keeps it shady. We have a very hapward fern. Underneath these little fronds or leaves are sporangia. Those are structures that produce spores. So all ferns produce spores. They are vascular. They have vascular tissue. In New Zealand, for example, they can be 20 feet high. But these are happy to be maybe a foot high, maybe a little less. Just a little bit down from this fern is another fern. doesn't quite look like a fern, but it is a fern. It's got the spores underneath these rolled up leaf edges. This is called a coffee bean fern or a coffee fern. And it uh, does pretty well in dry areas, actually, although this is moist and it's happy here, too. So this uh, coffee fern has a darker green. It's lighter underneath than, um, than the top. Coffee fern. Just a little bit further down, we have a silverback fern. You can probably figure out why it's called a silverback fern. Underneath this fern, it's silver. So it's silver on the back. And that silver powder is actually spores, the reproductive structures of uh, this uh, fern. All ferns produce by spores, but they have a different spore look. So here's a spore-produced plant, no flowers, but we're still happy to see the green of the ferns and their delicate leaves here on the hillside in the San Diego region.